Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Hughes, I am the Lord of Leisure, and welcome to another Aftermath film, of which I'm sporting a hobo's beard uh, type thing, uh, unfortunately. Um, you join me in the aftermath uh, of watching Valerian and the City of a Thousand Mares, or a Thousand Planets, starring, well, those people uh, behind me. Sorry about this. Unfortunately, the thing's trying to autocorrect because it's dark here, you see. Mm, oh, yes. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I came out with a rather dark impression of the film as well. Um, to start with, um, what I should say is this. Luke Benson did one hell of a job with creating a world that was fucking brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Um, it was so colourful, the variety was there, uh, the creatures were fantastic, imaginative. I mean, the, the production around all this was obviously, I, I could say, definitely higher than The Fifth Element, obviously the other film that a lot of people will compare this to, uh, honestly. Um, Although, obviously, at the time it was sort of confusing, but then people started following it all after all that time and saying, oh yeah, when the fifth element's on, oh yeah, we'll always watch it. I can't say that I would be saying it about this. You see, what they seem to have done is, with the story, uh, basically the... Uh, the, the start of it is uh, with all these lovely fish type people who live in a tropical paradise where they have these little cute pets things that when you feed them pearls they shit out lots more pearls and the balance of nature is there don't just don't try and comprehend it because it won't even make more sense as time goes on um, then shit happens, the planet's basically destroyed, and then we go to meet our heroes. Um, who have, have about all the acting ability, I think, of me. That's how bad they are. Yes, all this right now is technically a little bit more acting than what I saw those two do. Um, at times they did try. They did, you know, they, 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 they tried to show some level of emotion, maybe, but fucking hell, just someone throw a pie at someone, it might get a fucking response out of them, I mean, there are times when they just, I, oh yes, I love you, I will die for you, oh, di oh that bit towards the end, oh, but um, it was delivered with all the monotone that you would expect from the colour beige in human form, and that's what they predominantly became. And that's where a lot of people were in this. I mean, you got uh, old Clive Owen, you know, he's the commander, he's hardly in it, and then they even uh, name dropped Rutger Hauer. Oh, yes, Rutger Hauer is in this for all of one minute before then you just go. Pfft. So the story is that this city gets built around Earth um, from space stations. They show as years go on, various other people turn up and plank onto it. But then the whole satellite city thing orbiting the Earth is too fucking big. So they shoot it off into outer space and then they say, good luck. And then, yeah, then we see the fish people. Um, there is some good action sequences, there is some wonderful scenes. Um, John Goodman, you'll recognize his voice as one of the aliens that turns up um, when they're trying to steal one of these little pet things for some reason. Which I could spoil, but uh, suffice to say it's all for... It's good people doing bad things because of the economy. I'm not even making that up. That's... Yeah, just... I feel like this is Valerian and the planet of a thousand lost opportunities because the great... 
uh, the world created in all this, you know, the uh, expanse and everything else. I mean, I kind of get the feeling that they ripped off a little bit of Star Wars in a couple of bits here and there. Their main ship kind of looks like the Millennium Falcon on a bit. I, I don't know, but... There were some funny bits. I mean, uh, the computer-generated uh, characters certainly uh, had um, some go in them. And, um, oh yeah, that overly long dance sequence with Rihanna was overly long. Why? Just, why? I mean, you get to see a pole dance around a thing and she does other things and then she delivers all her lines probably with the same gusto that she did in Battleship which obviously everyone remembers her performance for. Um, it's... It's colourfully bland. That's a weird thing to say about this film, but honestly, it is colourfully bland. Um, the eff I can't say, uh, see this on anything other than Netflix and then maybe turn the volume up as well, because it seems that they... It didn't even have punch, you know, when there was massive firefights or anything, it may as well have been going pew pew <laughs> for all the difference it made. There were some hugely impressive bits in this, let down by a story with quite honestly a cringeworthy god awful ending, terrible acting, and a <laughs> There was chemistry between the two characters because obviously they fancy the pants off each other because you'll obviously get that from how they talk to each other and everything else. Christ, even, you know, the main dude here is Valerian, right? He just talks like this all the way through. Seriously, ears would bleed. Ears. So anyway, campers, that's uh, my aftermath impressions of Valerian and the Planet of a Thousand Mares. It's on at the cinema right now. Save the money for something else, and don't don't save the money for the emoji film. Yeah, even I'm skipping on that one. Anyway, campers, that's it from me. I'm gonna go home and and sleep uh, because I've got more shit to do, and. Whatever. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Take it easy, campers, and I'll see you all again very soon. But until then, bye.